back. This is the one. Circling Back podcast presented by Vizzy Heart Seltzer. The only heart seltzer with vitamin C and super fruit acerola, Dylan. Oh, uh, yeah, I know that, David. Only took me three times to nail this intro. I'm Dave. Again, you just heard from Dylan. Say hi to the folks. Hi, folks. We're not going to play the audio, but I, um, I got kind of intoxicated over the weekend, and I just went off talking about Vizzy at a restaurant. I sent you all the clip. Yeah, I had a lot of questions about it. Yeah. I was standing up at a restaurant, a very popular restaurant here in Austin, Texas. You can just say Matt's. People Matt's probably know by now. And I just went on and on about how much I like Vizzy. And there wasn't a microphone nearby. It was just me talking about Vizzy, and someone recorded it. Did That's you, how much he likes it. Did you wait it. till she was recording to do it, or were you going off and I, she just pulled out the phone? I didn't even know Bay was recording. Yeah. Okay. I just started talking about Ooh, Vizzy. And next the thing lady, you know, huh? That's how much you liked it. Yeah. Stepping out on the town, huh? Oh, yeah, hey. see? The other guy you just heard, that's uh, that's big game Brett Merriman. Uh, new flavors were ranked. Blackberry Lemon, number one. And the Tangerine one, whatever that is, number two. The other, the other two after that, I don't remember what they are. Watermelon something. Watermelon they're, they're, sugar. Bye, Dylan. Okay. Um, before we intro our very special guest who's just uh, champing at the bit over there. Look at him just champing. Mm-hmm. Champing his little ass off. <sighs> Oh, it's Damn. the unnecessary yawn. I feel it's disrespectful to the boys. I want to talk about our partnership with the LLS, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. We've all been affected by cancer in some way, shape, or form. We're campaigning to raise money in the man and woman, or in our case, team of the year campaign. LLS does more to advance science and support patients than any other cancer organization. They're the largest nonprofit dedicated to creating a world without blood cancers. Since 1949, they've invested nearly one3 billion in groundbreaking research pioneering many of today's most innovative approaches hit our donate link in the description of this episode and you'll see it as well all over our social our social media guys special guest jack hammers in the building dan register danny regs hey boys of podcast fame first time long time quick question for you did you write yes for Prop B. I'll okay. hang up and listen. <laughs> He's a sports caller asking about Prop B. Uh-huh. Another, uh, another team big arm guy in the building. Uh, not so much recently. Uh, yeah, Dan's, Dan's having some problems. I heard, I'm falling apart Dan, right now. Dan, intro <laughs> yourself. What do you do? What's up, boys? What are you apart. doing now? What am I doing now? Yeah, what's life? You're, doing, you're on this baby. press tour right now. Just you did Ross's living. pod last week. I'm doing week. the car wash, yeah. Just trying to ex- extend the brand. How is the brand? It looks good. Brand's looking good. The beard, you trim the beard, you shave the beard. The beard's gone. It's no longer. I saw Dan last week, and it was like, I mean, the the comp is always James Harden, but like it was up there. White Harden, yeah. White Harden. Mm -hmm. Another guy. You're a white man. Another guy post Grandex who's uh, still doing content, which you know you (sighs) love love to see. Yeah, we took a little, you know, two year sabbatical. That's all right. Back. Who cares, man? Stronger than ever. J Bone just got back in the game too. I know. It's good to see the Pour boys one out still for mixing Micah. it up. Someone, uh, Micah's, Micah's still in the game. Micah's, Let's make no mistake. Micah's uh, begging to call in to too much dip today. He has something. <laughs> yeah, Micah I, does more content than I do, and it's my full time. I got job, a feeling so. that the draft has lit a fire under his ass because he he's is, got just, something to say. He today. is also champing at the bit to just uh, go we, in on the on the boys. How's the water cooler these days? Phrase. Man. Did you know? Did you know Dylan thinks it's chomping and not champing? <laughs> what a total moron! I'm a chomp guy. Isn't it chomping? Uh, yeah. It's both. Chomping might sound better and be like kind of the universal t- term, but champing is, I think, the original. Surprised yeah, you didn't. Same know thing that. with Chuck and Chunk. Like Chuck well, is the that's regional. Chuck is well. I think this is like Chuckful. Chunk I think full? Chuck is how is how it's technically no, supposed like gonna, to go down. You're gonna chunk a vortex. Yeah. Or like I'm gonna chunk it downfield. Or chunk just go deuce. Up and get it. Or Chuck Deuce. Or throw, I just don't do. So. I would assume being from the Northeast, Dan, you're more of a chuck. Like I'm gonna chuck that ball, like, my, like myself. I don't think I ever said chuck or chuck. You're not gonna ch- you remember you chuck throw? it? The, I'm the dog toy. I'm you know launch the, it. the dog toy? A chuck it? Do no one yeah. says launch like on I'm a, a launch day it, to dude. day. So I was out on the chuck it for a like when I first saw people with them. I'm like, why don't you just pick it up and throw the ball? The leverage is on. It's the really fun. Yeah, and it's it's, it's like yeah, you it's don't strain, you don't strain your arm, and you don't have to pick up a ball that's covered in dog slobber. Yeah, it's, it's the move. The fact that I was ever against it is idiotic. Yeah, you're it's, a moron. It's, it, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll I'll own the take. What do you think the Chuck inventor is worth? Uh, Three million. Ninety-seven million dollars. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say sixty-five million dollars. What's the price point on those things? The Chuck it. 
but he converted bucks. half of his salary into Bitcoin, so there's no telling what it's worth now. Oh, wow. and we're pumping. It's going Ooh, up, dude. Damn. Ethereum. Uh, you can Let's get go. a back, Dan. For $6 oh. at Chewy.com. What's he worth, dog? I don't know. I thought you had the answer. You really just teased that and didn't have the. I had I had his uh, his Business Insider article. I don't. Let's not read that. Don't care. How many pop ups you got? (laughs) Way way too many. (laughs) Um, Hey guys, there's a bullet point here. It says, "Tell a friend about the podcast." (laughs) Yeah. Normally, Will's hosting. Will will be back Wednesday. Wednesday. Really? His fraternity leave ends manana. Yeah. You guys just leaving your babies at a firehouse? What's happening? Mm Mm-hmm. Two weeks, man. Two what, weeks. what is the time frame for that, right? You get a full year? A full year? No consequences? So you just leave your, your kid at the firehouse? I think oh. you're conflating oh. a lot of things here. I don't know. You're saying you get I'm a asking. full year to leave the baby at the firehouse? Yeah. No questions asked. But how do they know how old the baby is? I don't think that matters. Like, you couldn't leave your seven-year-old. Maybe. Maybe well, they, they put just, him to work. Maybe he starts the cleaning hose? the, fu- like the, the <laughs> like trucks. It violates they, a number of laws. They put him on the hose, man. No, you have to go. The fire academy is no joke. I know, I know. You wouldn't make it through. You're probably right, man. You and your no, back. You just yeah. be like, oh, guys, I can't today. My I got my back thing. This I never saw the doctor. This hose is heavy. Even though I was supposed to see the doctor like three years ago, I never went. I booked an I'm appointment dealing. with Doctor Bob. By the you way, you did. Wow. He's booked for two weeks, but yeah, because he's the most exclusive you. doctor in Westlake. Yeah, because he knows what he's doing. Is that the Undertaker's doctor? Yes. Okay. Michael Dell's doctor. He's the, the Undertaker. The doctor who's like five three. Jordan like Shipley. Two hundred eighty mm-hmm. pounds of solid muscle, and he just cracks every bone in your body he will he will blow your back out he will he will just tear that back up dan can we send randy with you no to I, video i don't want randy with me oh to video yeah mm-hmm. mm. no as it's, long as people it, no, know he's no, not no. my fr- it's like a interesting it's very open the therapy part is okay. very open and the part where he like blows your back out is very open so like there's not a lot of privacy so if somebody's like getting uh it's a factory man they they just pump you in and out it's crazy yeah so you're saying that video is a pot, like that TikTok would go nuts of Dylan, Dylan getting did, his back blown right, out by a, a short man, stocky as all all right, He's a short yeah. king. You don't have to dismiss king. him like it's that. It's all about the camera angle. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Oh, here we go. It's, it's like a six video, 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 video mixed with like <laughs> a, one of those videos that people love. That shit. It's like popping pimples. Yeah. Speaking of pop, you know, I caught him at Lifetime watching a pimple pop vid. If, if if it's on my explore feed and it is daily, I get sucked in. You know, you, you know, simply when you walk, cannot go on Instagram when you're at the gym. So you know the, the little couch right by the stairs. Costs. Yeah, Dylan was didn't know I was walking down the stairs. He was sitting in the one that has his back to the stairs, and I could see his phone. I knew it was Dylan. I'm like, oh no, what am I about to bust him looking at? And it was just a straight up. All he saw was flush. He thought I was looking at something uh, a little, which little would have bit. been aggressive as you were in public. Yeah, mm-hmm. Right, I mm-hmm. wasn't looking at pornography. It was just a pimple popping shit. Anyway. You hey guys, move, move speaking on. of that, yeah. we do uh, we do a Patreon thing. We've got the Worst of tomorrow, Tuesdays. You can submit stories through Worst of at WashMedia.com, or if you're a more of a form guy or gal, go to WashMedia.com and fill out the form. Also, Friday, Dan, we do uh, something behind a paywall, do voicemails. Well, at least this episode is not behind a paywall. We would never put you <laughs> behind a paywall. People aren't paying for no. that. No, don't put baby, <laughs> don't put baby in the corner. Don't put Dan I, behind. I a paywall. guarantee Ross lost multiple Patreons. No, I bet no. What is it? Just patrons. No, I kind of like Patreons. (laughs) Patreons, yeah. So check us out there. Um, Dan, we got a lot of things to talk about with you, man. Uh, Just like overall, just your 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 transition. Your are you thirty now? I'm not transitioning. What? Your transition to washed. I meant not, and not that we're hiring you, but you are. You appear to be falling apart. Seems that way. You look good. Yeah. You look yeah, great. For now. You're living uh, what some might say your best life. You're getting, you've got more impressions than we do. I feel like you're on like every Drinking Bros podcast in some capacity. Dan's well, I produce every podcast, yeah. Are. You have more reach than us. I do, which is wild to say, as I worked at a gym a year ago. Not, no shame yeah, in that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> eh. What are you doing now? Uh, so I am producing podcasts. For a company called Tetherball Media, the flagship program is the Drinking Bros podcast. So you're so, a bro who drinks. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm a sipping boy. You really don't drink that much anymore. No, not really. Like maybe once or twice a week. Mm, no, so you're sure. not really a drinking bro. You could learn a lot from him, Dylan. What are you trying to say, man? And if I do drink, it's wine. I like to party. Usually. It's, you know, it's good for your heart. I'm a wine boy. Every article since You know, wine says. is actually good for you. It's great. We were talking about. Hey, uh, hey, V, can you uh, can you write that up? 
Dude, it's cool. Abs- it's going to go viral. Like, it's And it did. It was click Every city. time. Every time. The one on PGP was always, um, I felt like every six months was like, a new study shows that cheese may actually help you live longer. <laughs> Probiotics. Mm. Did you see that one recently that uh, pizza for breakfast is actually more healthy than something else? I don't know. You have more more time to burn it off. Yeah. I guess. Gives you the calories. That's cool. Uh, we've cut out dairy in my household um, due to the feeding. So I'm sorry thanks to for bringing that, it up. I haven't I haven't seen Bay in so long. Pizza is Bay, Dan. I don't know if it you always that. is. Yeah. So yeah, flagship programs, drinking bros. Then I uh, produce all the different podcasts through that network. I have a podcast with Chuck Liddell and Adam Ray, comedians. Chuck Liddell, ever heard of him? From he's Entourage. A, he's a he's a fighter. Yeah. He is from Entourage. That's what he's most known for. Yeah. He almost got into it with Turtle, I think. I think Ronda Rousey did. Oh, really? I, think she beat I thought his there ass. was a parking lot dispute. Oh, wait, that's the movie. Okay. You probably, you probably avoided the movie altogether, didn't you? I did. Okay. Never saw the Entourage movie. It's a little fun fact about me. It's pretty good, man. I'll, There's no. I'll what? vouch for it. I liked it. Okay. Yeah, it was fun. I liked it. Fun and flirty. Uh, so, doing all the podcasts there, probably do like 20, 24 podcasts a week. Uh, obviously, Ross Patterson, former Hollywood actor. Yeah, I'm glad you're on here because I want to I want to call you out for something. In our group text, me, you, and Micah, you'll often reference Ross, and I always immediately assume it's a noted New York Times bestselling author W. R. Bowen, but it's not. You're talking about your Ross that mm-hmm. you now we, work for, who I've never met. That, yeah. So you gotta you gotta just stop throw, casually throwing out the names like I know these people. I don't know Ross. Oh, uh, you didn't watch the new guy. He's the bad guy in the new guy. The bad guy in the new. Is guy. that the movie? The movie, the new guy with the skinny guy from Road Trip. Yep. I've mm-hmm. never seen that, or okay. or actually even heard of it. You ever see Accepted? He's one of the frat bros. No. That like tries to, or he puts uh, Jonah Hill in like the hot dog costume. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so he, he was like he, topical. He was just the villain in like all the mid two thousand movies. So now he does podcasts. Okay. Him, and then a bunch of like Black Rifle Coffee guys. I think they're everywhere now. So. And yeah. you're doing your own pod. And we got our own podcast. Uh, well, I, for the Drinking Bros Network, I do a college basketball podcast which obviously it's over so wait until next season dude how about baylor how about baylor how about the texas coach am i right <sighs> yeah chris beard that's the one chris beard the beard master uh and then doing an mma show with uh giorgio papa g uh he's the guy that actually hired me he's the other producer and uh he used to wrestle with michael chandler at mizzou so uh, we're actually going to see Chandler fight on May 15th. Well, thanks for the in invite. Houston, yeah. Look forward to the invite the in the future. And then, of course, point. got my own thing. I learned, obviously, maybe we'll touch on this moving on. Uh, kept the IP, softcore history. It's my baby. So me, Rob Fox, Jake Goldman, every week go, go through, like, oddball history topics mm. that you probably didn't learn about. And, uh, yeah. I've, Say I've your grandma's it. history. Yeah, have you right. had Have you had Dan Carlin on that show? Dan Carlin. No, no, I, I, we don't like to acknowledge Dan Carlin, even though you took the name. Uh, well, no, it's parody law. It's a parody. Yeah. Dan Carlin, hardcore history. Quote. Softcore history, dude. Hardcore history is a great podcast. It's fantastic. Have you ever listened to it? I have not. You're a hardcore asshole. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Not a no. I haven't. Yeah, so we rotate every week. Last week was my topic. Timothy Dexter was the topic. Just I liked when y'all did the CIA's uh, history and drug running. That, that was, was Jake. Jake loves to lean into that shit. Yeah, J- Jake and I have some fun text on the mm-hmm. side mm-hmm. about mainly that. So we all have kind of our own quirks for every yeah. topic. Yeah. Okay. So it's cool. It's the, the branding's phenomenal. I love the logo. Of Thank you. I made history. that. Did I you? Agree. Yeah, I, I agree. agree. The neon stuff is very That is cool. good, Dan. Yeah, well, it's kind of overdone, but. Oh, okay. we try. Well, I try. Hey, like just it. take the compliment. <laughs> just take the compliment. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, let's recap this weekend of fun. Presented by a new sponsor. New sponsor alert? New sponsor. Guys, start throwing in my sponsors. New sponsor. No, you can't. Maybe not, at the end. Absolutely not. Uh, guys, Bison Coolers. Oh, look at that logo. Yeah. Bison Coolers, family owned and operated in Texas. Richland Hills, Fort Worth area. Oh, fun. Those are my old stomping grounds. My first job was in North Richland Hills after really? college. Well, Fort Worth, technically. I don't know. It might have been North Richland Hills, but that's not important. I always claim Fort Worth just because Fort Worth's dope. Uh, American made, hard, and soft coolers, Dylan. You know, it would be a real shame if you brought the cooler in that they sent us. I got a cooler, and it's at my house. It'd be a real shame. And they sent us a bunch of, um, what Ram- do you call it? Ramblers? Uh, tumblers? tumblers? Tumblers. Ramblers? Yeah. And they're customized. They've got the circling back logo on them. Very uh, cool. They're very cool. They're the drinkware. It's leak-proof stainless steel, Dylan. I don't know why you're uh, 
<laughs> it's leak proof. I don't know why you're pointing that out to me specifically. But. All their products, no one can be customized with logos and are great for employee gifts, customer appreciation. I said that weird. Or special events. I think we need to just start customizing our drinkware. Do they have a cooler that's big enough for, yes. say, a, uh, a small adult or maybe a child to Your like, lay down uh, inside? Randy, can you help? Do you, here's a sizing chart. So, <laughs> <laughs> The Holy sizing shikes. guide is amazing. Yes, I believe the 150-quart size cooler is big enough for um, like a small lad to fit inside. Maybe Dr. Bob can get in that. Who is this guy? He's uh, the bison. Guy. He's the bison. Is he really? He embodies the Bison brand. He looks like he would he be like, have like the number five song on the Texas music charts. Yes, this dude is, is <laughs> in Luke Combs' entourage. Yeah, hell yeah. He, this guy's Walmart Luke, like Luke Combs. Yeah. What's the okay, quality like on those, Dave? On what? On the on the cooler. It's fantastic. Yeah. I have not. I have not. Um. I haven't put any meats in there, but I do have all of the drinkware in there, and just the thickness of it, just the texture of it. I'm a big fan. You can use uh, promo code STEAM, Brett, for 10% off your order. So if somebody wants to get wild out there and order the 150-quart. Uh, <laughs> can we post a picture of the, the wash cooler somewhere? I want people to see this thing. It's pretty dope, man. We don't have to. I just I'll take a photo it's when I get home. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I don't have enough going on at home with the with the baby or anything, Dylan. Thanks. I mean, it'd put another take, thing. It'd probably on take plate. you ten seconds to take a pic and then send it to the. Crew. No, but then you gotta like be like, oh, Will's not gonna like this because there's not like a, a house plant yeah, in the background it's, it's, yeah, or some shit. It's not perfectly portrait moded. There's not a Hemingway book next <laughs> to it. <laughs> he's not. He's not too busy. He could probably come over and take a pic. He probably could. Hemingway book. Uh, why, I just uh, why promo why code you, Steam for ten percent off. What, Brett? What, I just wonder why you're coolers. switching to, to Bison this summer, Dylan. Why am I switching to Bison? Yeah, because it's a dope cooler, right? And it's uh, the price point's better. Uh huh. Then any, it's you need any other reason? I mean, done. I just want to see people rocking with Bison. This I think summer. it's That's like probably saying. like Big Cat proof. Like no, nothing's getting in that thing, man. Like besides Big, like what if Barstool Big Cat came down and was like, "Yo, can I have a beer?" He could probably get in it. Yeah, but if okay. it was like a, a big cat, I'd like share a beer animal, with him. Like a big feline, pred predatory cat. Yep, it's not getting in that. I agree. Man. Would oh, you yeah. baby bird a beer with Barstool Big Cat? Absolutely. All I'll, right, I'll let him do whatever he wants. Okay, with okay. me. Well, went went a weird direction. Bison coolers promo code Steam for ten percent off. Um, Dan, um, this we, is, before we get into this, speaking of Luke Combs, remember when he just put three in the drink at TPC Sawgrass when we were there? Yeah, but that, that's at a 17. lot of pressure, man. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. And he's hitting from the drop the drop zone, which is like, it's, a, it's what's like 80 yards or something. That's a, that's a touchy little wedge shot. It's, it's a brutal wedge shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was right after, didn't I get asked, didn't they try to kick me out or something weird? Well, that was right after I nuked one on the... Uh, the fake 17. Oh, it's because yeah. they were playing the national anthem and you refused to take your hat off, remember? No. Yeah, you didn't stand. No, it was because uh, I think it was because I did stand and I was blocking a walkway and they're like, sir, you have to move, sir. And I was like, oh, and you said, anthem. that's when you pulled the, do you know who I am card? I'm D man from Circling Back. Actually, it was touching base. And they're like, sir, we don't care. Remember? Yeah, you know, what is my finest moment? Yeah. They didn't respect the D-man. Yeah, we yeah. didn't get the inside the rope access. I mean, they treated us pretty well, but they didn't give us that. We got – I was thinking about the photo that Will got of uh, the big cat, Tiger. And uh, do you remember when he was walking through to the tee box? Oh, and, yeah. Like there was a young lady, scantily – not scantily clad, but, you know, she was – She was pretty. She was uh, She was showing him off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. the cat gave her a glance, and Will got a, po a photo at the, at the perfect time. No way. Oh, yeah. One of the best photos he's ever gotten, I'll say it. Oh, wow. One of the did best I've photos of a cat. I haven't seen this photo, actually. Dan, did your girlfriend respond to a circling back tweet and uh, demand an ass off with Randy, our producer? She did, yeah. we that, got, we got to recap this weekend in fun, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Come on, dude. I'm, I'm already talking about my weekend. It was dope. What'd you do? Tell us all what right, you did. All right, thank you for asking. I thought you'd never ask. Um, well, Saturday, it was, there was a, basically a monsoon in Austin, Texas, but it didn't stop me and Bay from going to a party. We got pissed on all weekend. We got absolutely pissed on. Yep. Yeah. I was going to try to come up with a different word there. It didn't I, have not, it. There was nothing. Yeah. Um, we went to a, like a derby slash single de Mayo party, and it was just sick. I was told it was Dilly de Mayo. It was <laughs> you must have talked to Bay about this. Uh, yeah, it was fun, man. A lot of fun. Uh, Bay, kinda, Dan, if you don't know, is Dylan's girlfriend. Yeah, Bay. Okay. Yeah. B -A -E. uh, thank, thanks for clearing that yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Then we went to Matzo Rancho, which is where I I went off about Vizzy and how good it was. I like how you just floated the video of you going off about Vizzy 
uh, to us as if like you don't want us to post it, but like someone's gonna post it. That's okay if y'all post it. I mean, I, I don't, I don't really care. We'll post it either way. Uh, Sunday, Bay met uh, Quinn, my my new little niece. Queen and of course Haley and Kendall. So that was a big day, and we had a nice little Sunday. It was it was beautiful, beautiful weather in Austin, beautiful. Texas. The monsoon cleared out. What was the weight like for Matt's on Saturday? Ooh, um, not bad. Really? Yeah, and I counted the weather. I believe we waited probably ooh, fifteen minutes, and or, wow. yeah, it wasn't bad at all. That's kinda, cooking. Kind of great, yeah. guys. Uh, I didn't do anything this weekend except for watch draft and fighting. So I will yield my time to our guest. It's pretty good though. Oh, it was, it was great. great. Time to... It was the most draft content I've consumed in a long time. And that Yuri knockout, all time, probably knockout of the year. Did right you after any? we were, did you watch the fights? Yes. What'd you do all weekend? Uh, so Friday, obviously went on RBP or, yeah, Ross Ballin podcast. Again, I get our Ross and my Ross. Very confusing. confusing. Yeah, because he also has an RPR, it's RPR, RBP, same thing. So I'm behind a paywall. Did that? Did the Friday night Jack sesh <laughs> with uh, Jack Mandeville? Another one of our our shows. Oh, really? that's Friday night. Jack More on that. Sesh. Brett's. <laughs> Can't wait. He's a pretty funny dude. Uh, did that? Went to the girlfriend's. Made dinner. Saturday. You can make it some extravagant dinners. Let me just say that I'm a pretty good cook. Yeah. Are they like meals that you order that you just make right there? Do you no, make from go, scratch. Yeah. Okay. Go to H E B. Get everything. If I uh, feel fancy, go to Central Market. So I made a little uh, chicken parm on Friday night. Oh, yeah, it's kind of like my go-to Philly guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's Philly. That's very Philly. Saturday, just kind of uh, hung tight. Watched the fights. Watched the draft. Watched the uh, Kentucky Derby. Watched the Valspar because I had a, mm. a vested interest in Keegan Bradley, who had the lead for three rounds. Mm. Tried to double dip. Had a first-round leader bet on him so that cashed. So one at boxes ZD on Keegan this weekend. But was trying to get three boxes with a with a dub. Obviously, put one in the drink on Sunday, on thirteen. He was the only player flew on, into the sun. Only player got a little aggressive on that line. Like I don't think anybody else that entire week put one in the water on thirteen. But Keegan found a way. He did. Wasn't even close. Shouts to Sam Burns. If it had to go down like that, I would have wished it was Max because Max is at least a little bit more interesting. But yeah, just kind of spent spent the uh, the weekend just doing sports because of the the weather. And uh, working. So, is a box of ZD? Is that like a unit, or is uh, that a literal? Like, is it's that from a, uh, Sopranos. Uh, it's a okay. thousand bucks. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Philly guy. Got it. Okay, basically buy, hey, Jersey. Box of ZD. So, like when they, they play their poker games or whatever, or, uh, when they get they get into a game, they just say uh, I'll have five boxes of ZD. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, did not learn know. something new today. Yeah. How about that? These freaking paisans. <laughs> no, ain't not, not a paisan. Come on, dude. Uh, Brett, what did you do? Yeah, I, I spent a lot of my time following the weather. It was a fun storm tracking weekend, Dave. Yeah. We almost did storm track on on Friday. We flirted with it. Yeah, we flirted with it. Um, other than that, I got some stuff done around the house, cleaned the place up, did some laundry. You know, the, the usual stuff. Didn't do much. Uh, got the new Vizzies for, for yesterday. Spent a uh, hefty amount of time by the pool. Dude, the, what? Uh, how are you so bad at being in the sun? For it, I, that is such that a SPF thirty, Dave. I was, I kept you applying. Missed, you missed many spots on the arm. I know. I, I don't know. You I gotta know. be careful, dog. I, I was. You think you're tougher than the sun? And you posted that sun. that cocky post from on Instagram about like who would ever need this uh, yeah, life I got, preserver? I heard about that in the DM. Goodness. <laughs> Actually, you ever heard of shallow water uh, yeah. drowning? Heard about it. Uh, you turn around and not drown this weekend. I did. There were yeah. some flooded areas. A lot of floods. Yeah. Oh, my girlfriend actually, uh, she got stuck <laughs> at uh, the president of Tesla's house because she was doing a catering event there. You can say Elon, his name. Elon Musk? No, no. <laughs> president. So Julian. Uh, Julien. Yeah, the, the French dude. Uh, but Elon Musk did show up. She said he, uh, he came for about 15 minutes, had a plate of dinner, and then bailed out. He just came by for a plate? <laughs> yeah, have a, one plate of dinner, please. <laughs> That's not how you would order it. One plate of dinner. <laughs> maybe if, if you're Elon, maybe that's all it takes, man. But she was the only person that showed up for the catering company. That uh, cause, seems like cause a of the we- communication. Because of the weather, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did she parlay that into a job at Tesla? I'm thinking she might, yeah. Like she uh, showed that kind of work ethic. Com- work ethic. She listens to the podcast. 
Her and my sister, yeah. Yeah. She, so I, I keep up to date with you guys through that. Very cool. Yeah. Dan's too cool to listen. To she's pretty funny on Twitter, man. Yeah. She's pretty funny. She's I mean, don't give tweets. her too much credit. No. Do she, I need to follow? She makes fun of Dan on Twitter. I'll be honest. It's really all of her content. She just followed <laughs> it's me yesterday. pretty funny. She just fun. followed me yesterday. I'll, I'll hit her with a follow back. I'm team follow you back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's the one who wants to have an ass off with Randy. Right. Uh, honestly, Randy might beat me now because I haven't squatted in about so, three and a half weeks. Well, who wants to have the ass off with Randy? Dan she, or his girlfriend? She wants an ass off to occur between oh, these two. Oh, I see. I see. I thought she was putting she her demanded. own ass up against Randy. No, I mean, no, I'm, no, all, no. I'm a, team lower body. Like, I want to look like a fucking Dorito. I'd rather be all lower okay. body. A Dorito. Do you but, see the uh, new Dorito uh, bag? cheese chip. The new Dorito what? Bag. It's Which one? Minimal. Th- 3D yeah. Doritos? Or? I don't know. It looks like it's just boring. Like, blah. Mm-hmm. It's not as extreme. Man, I, I wouldn't put my ass up against Rands, but that's just me. Uh, J-Bone was claiming to have... J-Bone oh. is sneaky thick, yeah. Yeah, he said Randy's more toned. Now, Dan and Dan and Randy, that's a good matchup. Because, you know, he's a bike riding guy. Mm-hmm. He rides a bike often. Mm-hmm. So he's pedal pushing. Right. Where you, I, I don't know, tell us, you're kind of transitioning into a washed guy. Mm-hmm. With the uh, was it, MCL? meniscus, yeah, or the meniscus and the PCL, yeah, yeah. Dan's Dan's on the DL right now. Dan, are you down bad right now? It's not great. Shoulders starting to go, legs gone. I, I don't really know what to to do during leg day. You just get used to it. I, I ride the bike a little bit, but you take one CBD. Uh, yeah, rub a little uh, arnica on it. Maybe some Delta Eight. Maybe some essential oils. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think uh, – so, Dan, I see Dan in the gym quite a bit, and he's, like, taking it easy. So, I'm, I'm having him form check me, coming over, checking me out as I'm pulling sumo. I had him form check me a few weeks ago. Dan hates that I pull sumo, but I'll do it on your ass, I swear. You don't like – you're not a sumo guy. Yeah, and he also goes uh, kind of alternate grip. It's not good either. Yeah, with, like, very low weight. So, it's really unnecessary. Who do you think you are, dude? You alternate grip sumies? No, I don't – I. No one's calling them sumies. Yeah, you can just say sumo. Just go overhand, just go shoulder length apart. Dan Dan said my form was pretty good. He suggested I keep it a little tighter pulling up, like mm-hmm. closer to my leg. You want to activate other those lats though. when you come up. Other than yeah. that, yeah. I was, it was dope. He to said. hold it. Yeah. So, yeah, he's like, that's a dope lift. He you said just that's got a dope there. form. That's a dope deadlift you're doing. I'm sir. still not as bad, like down bad as Stanley, who's coming back from a torn quad. We talk Whoa. about Stanley every now and then on here. Yeah, yeah. he comes up. He is a specimen of a man. Yeah, large guy. Dan's uh, intaking a lot of caffeine. That's another note I have here. Dan walked in with, um, what, what is this again? It's called Ghost. Ghost. This is a collab like with our friends off, at Sour Patch. It's like they ripped off the um, Snapchat thing. Sna- thank yeah, you. Yeah, the yeah. Snapchat Ghost. Snapchat's so bad. Snapchat stinks. They probably don't, like, they're so bad, they're not even aware of this company, most likely. Probably not. But before the pod, Brett was going through the ingredients on your, on your beverage, mm-hmm. and you informed us how many. Uh, Milligrams of caffeine are you taking in a day? Eh, probably like 1,200. Damn, that's yeah. too much caffeine. That's, uh, are you sure? A gram yeah. of no, caffeine. Because I'll drink like three of these a day, a couple cups of coffee. How's your tummy? We've, uh, Did some, you say three of those a day? Mm-hmm. Damn. 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 I'll drink like Kill Cliff yeah, CBDs. Are just rotting. How's back. your tum tum? Feels good. Okay. I, mean, I haven't had an issue with my Crohn's disease in like five years. Do, you take, cool. a, do you take a pre workout? Uh, not anymore. No, I'll drink okay. one of these. Yeah. Just have a ghost instead. Yeah. Every now and then I'll, you know, dry scoop it. What is what is that? What is that? Dry scoop oh, pre workout. Okay. Oh, that's a, a sour patch uh, collab. Collab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of ta- it's more tastes more like a Swedish fish. You know, sour, sour patch, patch kids. Um, this are big, they're big fans of this podcast. I see. There's a whole thing. Yeah. They love in the break room. Yeah. Shouts to sour patch kids. That's free. It's free ad right there. Well, Dan, I look forward to what you're going to bring to this pod today. Now that we're 30 minutes in, we just introed you for about the first 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the host. That's on me. We we going three hours? We doing Rogan? We're going we're going full Rogan. Oh, gosh. Before we get into are, it, are we allowed to say that anymore? Is he problematic now? It' hard to say. I mean, he's been canceled how many times? We're going full Dan Carlin. How about yeah, that? Okay. Let's do a promo code read. Sorry, that was my Dan Carlin. It's not bad. It's not. It's not terrible. I haven't listened to him in a while. Hey guys, Cuts Clothing. Cuts Clothing. Our good friends at Cuts, fellas. The sport of business means demanding excellence from your craft and your wardrobe. Your fit needs to be versatile, blending timeless style and comfort so that you look as good as you feel. For that, there's Cuts Clothing. Oh, Dylan. shocker! Randy has another Cuts shirt on today. Like He's the he king always of Cuts. Does he's absolutely king of Cuts. Do we get it? You work out. You want to show the bot off. 
They've taken a classic men's fashion staple, the plain tee, and refined it, combining premium quality with a minimalist aesthetic. Mm-hmm. I think that describes Randy. Premium quality, minimalist There's aesthetic. There's nothing minimalist about that ass, though, I'll tell you that. No, that's true. That ass is a problem. <laughs> Cut shirts, polos, hoodies, and crew sweatshirts yeah. are made for the, <laughs> the man who works hard, plays hard, and never settles for less, all in the sport of business. Business is a sport, it's Dan. It's a sport, Dan. Yeah. We've been saying it. Been saying it. Been Take, trying to tell you. How many of the five tools do you have for business day? That's what I want to know. Hopefully, cuts clothing is one of them. Dude, there people were talking that I've I've created the six. Yeah, I was gonna say he's a six tool player now. <laughs> I've got all what? I've got all that and an extra tool. <laughs> wow. Take a plain tee, but make it Tony Stark. How about that? The bleeding edge of fabric technology meets the man confident enough to wear it. Cuts clothing. Okay. And can we talk about their founder real quick? Who set out? Steve Borelli. Great name. Set out to create clothes ready for every occasion the modern man faces. Like, uh, I don't know, being the video guy at an up-and-coming podcast company. He started by reinventing the t-shirt. That's where I would start, too. I've often thought about starting a, a, a men's uh, quality uh, clothing brand, and I was like, I'm going to start at the t-shirt. But look, Steve Borelli did it first. He did it for you. you don't yeah, have to he's already now. sponsoring the podcast. You can just like, focus on podcasting now. Instead yeah, that's probably the for the best. Company. It's the perfect t-shirt. It's premium with the purpose. It's designed with custom-engineered fabric, expertly graded, for the perfect fit, arming you for every challenge and opportunity. It's not just a lifestyle. It's not just clothing. It's office, leisure, apparel for the sport of business. Get 15% off your first order by going to cutsclothing.com slash steam. That's cutsclothing.com slash steam for 15% off the only shirt worth wearing. You got Pima Cotton now, too, Dave. You know that? Pima Cotton. Dude, I'm tr- I got my eye on this wrinkle-free Pika polo. You're a big Pika guy. Uh, wrinkle-free you, Pika polo. I want you to get that, but you don't play golf anymore, so it's not like you need it. You don't have to wear it at the golf course, though. No, but it gets. You, you know, can wear it to the boardroom, to the discotheca. <laughs> exactly. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you guys been following the Player Impact Fund? What happened to that guy, by the way? The discotheca guy. T-shirt. Wyatt. He's one Coke? of the Coke brothers. Wyatt Coke. He's whatever he's doing. He's probably he's, he's invested okay. in Ethereum. Probably. He's probably. You know? He's probably a crypto billionaire. Well, what he about his went shirt? from being a trust fund millionaire to a crypto billionaire? What about his shirt brand, though? His shirt company. I wonder how that's doing. It's a side project. He wears it from the boardroom to the discotheca seamlessly. He doesn't it's have more to of change. A pa- yeah, a passion project. It's crazy. Yeah. What was that shirt brand called? That was one of the last things I, I published on PGP. <laughs> was a write-up, and I think it got like twenty-three hundred reviews or something. No one read it. Nobody thought it was as funny as we did. <laughs> <laughs> Wyatt Coke. Hey, the Player Impact Fund. We've uh, we touched a little bit on too much dip. Uh, well, it's the PIP. Is it the PIP? Mm-hmm. It's the program. Program. Okay. Well, Player Impact PIP. Program. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, Great Expectations. Oh, yeah. look at that. Yeah. A very learned man, Dan. One of the two books I've read. Golf Clout Wars. They're looming. The Golf Clout Battle is going to be something. Um, I don't know how much you guys have looked into this. I think it's something we need to be aware of because it's kind of uh, the Venn diagram on topics we can talk about on circling back and too much dip. Like there's an overlap here because it's all social media clout. People are going to get paid. I think it's what, eight people? Oh, no, the 10 biggest needle movers. I thought it was eight. Maybe it's the eight. Uh, $40 million, all for popularity. There's an MVP index, which apparently Spieth's dad's company has um, hmm. created like an algorithm measuring engagement hmm. across all platforms. Q-scores. That's interesting. Yeah. That's well, a little interesting. Yes, but Jordan Spieth is absolutely the worst at social media among everyone on tour. It's not even close. Get him out of here. I don't even think he's logged Toss in. Toss him. Tr- truly. The worst. He only posts sponsored content, and he's a blue chip sponsor guy. So none of his sponsor posts are fun or anything. They're trash. It's all like uh, it's mm-hmm. AT&T and Coke. They all post links, too, that are just dead in the Instagram comments. It, it's just there's there's nothing good about his profile. He doesn't even try to like you know you have to do hashtag ad or whatever. He doesn't yeah. even try to like mix that up and make it fun. It's just hashtag advertisement. Yes, it's very boring. <laughs> yeah, but you know who's gonna crush this? Don't say. I've Brooks. got an idea. Don't say Brooks. We are Morgan Stanley. Justin Rose. Justin Rose. Justin Rose has like eight. It, every fifteen seconds in a golf broadcast is a Justin Rose commercial. Yeah, but this is more just like his so, your social clout, right? And how no, like your it's your Q score. It's everything. It, it, it's got like six different things that go oh, into really? this. Three of them are the same thing, basically. It's yeah. like a, a measurement of your engagement on. Social. Like otherwise, Max Homa gets this every time. Like Max would be number one. I don't think yeah, Max is even uh, touching this. Yeah, but it still this. matters about how many people you're reaching. 
Which, uh, yeah, if you think about it, Twitter is what, like 2% of the world? Yeah, but sadly, like, Max Homa doesn't reach as many people as Jordan Spieth does, despite having much better content on his pages. Right, right. So Max isn't going to touch it. Well, let me, uh, let me read this. Tell me if this is a good tweet or a bad tweet. Okay. This is from Fred Couples. Ah. Uh, well, Fred great. Jim Nance's roommate. Jim Nance's roommate. I mean, he's no Stuart Sink. Let me get this straight. There's 40 million in play for the guys on the at PGA Tour based on social media likes and follows and tweets. The only tweets I've ever heard make you money are birdie tweets. Good luck with that. Huh. Emoji. <laughs> oh, my God. That's terrible. Had to do it to him. That's bad. I'll read that again. Freddy, the only tweets it. I've ever heard that make you money are birdie tweets. Oh, no. Birdie tweet tweets. Do you get it? Yeah. Like a birdie on the golf course, Dave, but like a tweet. Do you get it? Is he not familiar with the concept of sponsored content? Spontent, if you will. Well, Dave, it's a creator content. economy. Is Fred? But Fred you know, is you, mad. He's big mad. You know the old school guys are not going to like this. This is a young man's game. You saying man's Jim Herman's not going to be happy with this? Yeah. Yeah. What does uh, what's uh, Lanny Watkins have to say about this? We got to ask. Haven't checked somebody in. needs to check in with Sandy Lyle. Yeah, get Sandy Lyle on the horn. See Dude, Sandy, Sandy, sneaky might have a, a case here because. I, I feel like every Masters that rolls around, we talk about Sandy Lyle. He's my favorite player on tour. I don't think he's active. Did he not play this he, last He one? only plays at the Masters. He only plays Masters, yeah. That's it. And I love so they're not eligible? That's so like bullshit. the older guy, like Jim Furyk. Dude, he be. goes Dude, out he's there. He's eyeballs on the game. He fires a couple 84s, gets a couple rounds of golf at Augusta National, and goes home. It's beautiful. Who's going to try the hardest? Like, who Brooks. is, who is I mean, cloud chasing the hardest? Justin Thomas, Brooks. Because you know, they've known about this since. Bryson. Bryson's not really trying. He's just going to stay the same. He's going to keep doing what he's doing, putting out like 20 minutes. Those, uh, meat, those his, meat head. His little, yeah. uh, his little meat house or his little half ass sway house. 20 minute pandemic meat videos. House. That's what it's, uh, that's what it's it the meat house. Yeah. Uh, so they've known about this, the players, for a while, like a few, I don't know, six months or something. It's weird that this dropped right after the Super League was announced. Hmm. Hmm. And all the PGL talk. Man, I get why they're doing this. I want to grow the brand, grow the game. I get it. Uh, there aren't there aren't enough dynamic personalities on tour for me to like really be interested in this. There are uh, there are plenty. Not really. There are. Um, oh, oh, Dan disagrees. It's uh, I mean, the announcers they just kind of like they find two facts about a person and then they just repeat it over and over again. Well, it's like, oh, that forget. Max Homa, he's great on social media. People forget Dustin Johnson can dunk a basketball. Yeah, you no one talks about that. Did anybody play lacrosse back in the day? Do like a shit uh, yeah, Max Jones. You want to know who the uh, the the McCorkle the, Jones? the most engaged <laughs> with uh, golfers on tour are? Justin yes. Rose. <laughs> Ooh, let me guess. Let me guess. Justin Rose is just Jordan Speed with an accent. You know who's actually good on social media? Is Ian Poulter. Yes, Poulter's good. Yeah. On Instagram. Yep, Instagram. Ricky Fowler. Oh, Ricky God. Fowler is not in the top twenty. Never mind. Tiger. Wait, also no, not in the top one hundred in the world, right? No, Instagram. See, you have the, the delicate balance on Instagram because if the more followers you have the tougher it is on the engagement rate at social media 101 yeah Dylan you learned that the hard way I don't really get that I Doc like Redmond number one really who Doc Redmond on the tour in terms of Instagram engagement with a 13.88 percent former Doc Redman, former USAM champ that's a Doc guy Redman. that Dan will Dan will text me on like Wednesday and be like hey uh 125 take a, to take one a flyer yeah. 125 to one <laughs> so this, okay so this is just an engagement rate yes okay rate. I, I got you percentage is much much different like than just, just total engagement I thought you meant total engagement it's okay. it's Rick, Tiger's number one Roy yeah, number the two smaller Jordan the, three yeah Ricky the smaller four. the 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 account the yeah. more engaged you're gonna be Joel Damon two cares about him victor hovland i mean Joel, victor hovland guy. F- dude, sneaky good round dude hove almost snuck up and back dude, door i would have i would have burns like more. just yeah if burns ejected hove could have took that Ho- hovland is my favorite golfer me too right now i love the guy yeah, he's great he's just uh he just makes me smile he's high rory he's very happy you say he's high rory yeah i think like, he does the weed hovland like, yeah i think like he's, he's rory on weed on your yeah, ass yeah. Not on your ass. Rory's got to have his own CBD company at this point, right? Like that feels like something he would just start. I don't know. Do you might have to check right. in. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that. You got any other facts? Nope. Okay. This, they're saying basically, <laughs> guess the, guess who this is going to impact the most or or benefit the most? One, Tiger Woods. Two, Rory McIlroy. Three, mm. Jordan Spieth. Four, mm. Ricky. Five, Bubba. Six, Ian. Seven, Dustin. Eight, Phil. Nine, JT. So ten, Justin Tiger's Rose. just going to collect a check with, without ever playing. without playing. Yeah, this is this the is the Tiger Woods. Again. Insurance fund. Uh, see, I feel like it's the insurance fund against the PGL. 
It is. Yeah, that too. I was I was uh, all in on the PGL. Just <laughs> something different. Top sixty guys. Just I just want to see the chaos that we. Well, you guys are to. you're F one fans, right? Yeah, ground floor actually. Ground floor, of course. Been talking about it for a long time. Check out too much dip. We'll talk about Lewis Hamilton today. Surprising winner, Lewis Hamilton. Yes. No one saw that coming. A close matchup with Red Bull. Max. What were you saying? Oh, I was just saying uh, F1, there's what, 20 racers? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm for cutting the fat. Just get rid of, like, all the riffraff. Just give me, like, the top 50 guys. You're, you're, yeah. You want yeah. the big names. You're big yeah, names yeah. only. For all sports. Get rid of some of these teams, too, in basketball. Who would be a sneaky – who's going to be sneaky good but, like, not in, like, a try-hard way? Like, they're just going to be themselves and be like, oh, okay, this dude's going to – he might sneak into the top eight and get the bag. you got to think Sneds. No. You don't well, think maybe, Sneds? I mean, Duda's engagement with him might put him over the top. Yeah. Do, yeah. Give me Jimmy Walker doing just, like, Q content. Just throwing a big old piece of meat on there? Yeah, not, not like Q, the letter Q is in Q. K, Barbecue. C-U-E. Major yeah. winner. Jimmy Walker, yeah. Mm-hmm. PGA. Right, and he's got the the sneaky benefit of you Google Jimmy Walker or no Rowdy Gentleman John Walker, mm. uh, Adam, Adam Scott, Parts and Rec actor. He's going to get ad, added Google searches. So you're saying that SEO can be kind of uh, misleading, misleading and, and, paid and affect for? people. Okay, uh, just saying. Is he the most famous Adam Scott? I don't know. I don't know who you're going to do. Who would win that? Who gets Who gets busted for buying followers? Bryson. Brooks. Is it Bryson? Brooks. Uh, Brooks. Yeah. Sad to say, but Brooks. I like Brooks. No one's doing that though. It's too easy to figure it out. He. he Why do you like Brooks? Who's doing too enough. much, man? Brooks stinks. Man. Well, I was ground floor, Brooks. That's not. I've gone back and forth, and I got, now I'm back out on him. I was not real on him. He's a douche. I'm a DJ guy. I don't think you can be a Brooks and a DJ guy just because they've they've come to a head. Because so to speak, yeah. DJ, Never is, got natu- the details on DJ is naturally who Brooks tries so hard to be. He tries to be like the the cool meathead guy. He just does too much on on social media, man. Plus, he can dunk a basketball. Okay. And he'll go viral on a boat. Every now and then. Yeah. Every now and then. I mean, they both go on boats, right? Both of them do boating. Mm-hmm. Very true. Um, who's just who will be the absolute worst? Who will be the most insufferable? Bubba. Is it Bubba? Bubba's not as bad as you think. Bubba I, gets a bad rap. I feel like Bubba's had a, a, a renaissance. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's his thing. That's he was a signature. golf boy. Do you think he him and Ricky, boy, him golf. and Ricky, run it back with uh, <laughs> Hunter Mayhan? Hunter Mayhan. <laughs> and uh, who was the bald fuck? <laughs> oh, uh, Stu. No, the wasn't Stu. Singh. The dude who's a slow, really, really slow. Can't even remember his name. Can't remember his name at all. I will say Soft this: tour for sure. You will be seeing a lot of um, like. Random golfers commenting like the most basic way on like just large fire Instagram. emoji, fire emojis, fist pump emojis. Oh, Cam Tringali just hitting up everything on PGA Tour. Yeah, you're gonna be seeing some volume shooting in the comments. Like, it's it's gonna be gross. Which, by the way, congrats to my man. I think he became the all time leading uh, money maker. Who Cam Tringali on tour for a guy who's never won on tour this weekend good for him that's fantastic speaking of breaking news dustin johnson just tweeted thank you valspar champ for the great event and posted a picture it's already starting that's it give me give me a breakdown on that tweet how many likes uh 110 in the last 11 minutes that's like a contractual post though like he that was hit the he hit valspar with the tag yeah so it could be it could be i'm just saying these guys are the the volume shooting is going to start we need to do some kind of content with this. Like, we need to follow it weekly, do, like, a draft of Ooh. some sort. You know who's going to fucking crush this Ooh. in the worst way? Patrick Reed. He's creating sponsors that don't even exist. What is his, like, he's got, like, hardcore software. <laughs> he's got, like, three different companies I've never heard of that just sound like a, a fake company. I love a good fake company. Mm-hmm. And there was a, a point in time where he was wearing shirts for a company, and they came out and actively said... We do not sponsor Patrick Reed. That's However, a tough place to be. We appreciate him wearing our, our stuff. Just Wait, to be clear. Did that really happen? Yeah. What is he doing? Why would he wear their logo? Because nobody wants to sponsor Patrick Reed. God, he has sticks. to be the most the, the least likable person on tour. Eh. They all hate him, man. But he's yeah. good. He's good for the game. He's a villain. I like having people like that exist. Speaking of existing, can we talk about uh, Edward's Starbucks order? <laughs> yeah, who's Edward, first of all? 
Randy, I, I hit you with an email like one minute ago. Oh, look at that. Quickest video Gosh. guy in the game. Take some notes, Dan. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. Starbucks was trending, and Edward was trending, and I was, like, fully expecting to see that Edward Norton did something awful. But he didn't. It's just some guy at Edward and his uh, Starbucks order is going viral. A venti caramel crunch frappuccino. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try to read the ingredients in this. This, is this guy was This guy was doing a bit, right? There's no way this is anybody's actual order. This is, this is for the retweets. This is, yeah. this is 300 grams of sugar. Five banana... Well, I don't know if yeah, that's what does like that mean? pumps of banana syrup or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Extra caramel drizzle, extra whip, extra ice, extra cinnamon. What is dull top? Dull, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really get creative. I'm more of an oat milk guy. Seven pumps, add dark caramel something. Sauce. 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 Ex Seven pumps? That's too many pumps. Seven add frap chips. Five pumps, frap, something, double blended, heavy cream. Heavy cream just unnecessary at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you missed the extra caramel crunch. And the one pump of honey, See, no, one no, pump no, of no, honey no. blend. This guy's a biohacker. Uh, once you exceed a certain limit of uh, sugar, it actually resets. Really? Mm -hmm. Is that how it works? Mm -hmm. This is uh, pretty unbelievable. I'm processing what Dan just said. Is this the most ad egregious drink order like, if you have 100 grams of sugar, what's the difference between 100 grams and, like, 300 grams? 200. It's going to ruin your day anyway. The answer is 200. Just reset it. What are you putting in your coffee? You said you're doing a couple cups a day. It's black. Just black? It's black coffee. Do you make it at home, or do you? Do the drinking bros have a... Uh, a we have a shit ton of, like, coffee from Black Rifle. Wait, so a gonna... sneaky underrated part of this order is that it was placed at 6.45 p.m. Oh. Oh, so this guy, this guy, <laughs> this guy was up until four a.m. It is finals time. Edward, what are you doing? Yeah, this was a joke. There's no way this is a real order. There's just no way. You know how sweet this would be. I would like to see Edward, like just a pick. How are you imagining Edward? Uh, probably, you know, not not fat, but skinny fat. Yeah, just terrible body. Just Tra trash first bod. team trash ball. Trash ball. Probably 145 pounds. Oh wow. Oh. So a, l a little tiny bad. guy, yeah, like 145 pounds, five but, seven, but a real soft 145. Bag of milk, about 30 percent body fat, yeah. Ooh. Like, are you describing J Bone? No, <laughs> all right. Well, I feel like J Bone's catching that straight. Is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jared's great. a little taller than that. I think Jared's around 190. You know he's injured. Is he? oh, his, his shoulder uh, disc. He can't play disc golf. That's right. What happened? I, th I th he's, he's just on the got IR. Some, I think he might have uh, done something to his labrum or his rotator cuff. Mm -hmm. And apparently his um, his doctor said, well, it's because the only physical activity you do is disc golf. It's the only muscle really? in his body that he works yeah, out. Yeah, so he's, he's... His only activity is on the disc golf course. Yeah. That and Twitch, which I don't think that's even comparable. Well, it's a sport. It is a sport. Yeah. Um, he, still, he still claims that he could take us, me, you, and Will, in a, in a scramble format. The more I think about it, the more I think he probably could. Now might be the time to get him. He should be learning to throw a disc with the other arm. Like, just to, just so, like, you know, balance out the muscles. You don't think so, and, Brett? No, I, I, I do. I, I think it's better for his golf game, too, his disc golf game. Because then if, you, if, you, if you're a natural fade and you just you have it in the bag. He actually said it helped his golf game. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't. Okay. It makes sense. Ball golf, that is. Right. Can you teach a baby to be ambidextrous? Yeah. My mom was born le left-handed, and they, she was taught to be right-handed. Damn. Well, I guess it, she's not ambidextrous because she can't do shit with her left hand, but she was taught to go the other way. Okay. Somebody, like, somebody, a lot, of, a lot of baseball dads will teach their kids to be switch switch hitters from the jump. Just they grow up hitting from both sides of the plate. That's a thing for sure. That's such over the top baseball dad move. It's, it's really not though. To teach your kid. It's, I mean, maybe not, but I'm picturing like some for some people to swing wrong-handed. It feels somewhat natural. It's not a totally weird thing. There's probably something to training the other that the, like the other side. You know, it's yeah. going to strengthen even if you do go back to being a righty. Yeah, I like went to high, you, sc high school with a guy who did everything in sports right-handed except for shoot a basketball. He did that left-handed. I thought it was the strangest thing. That's ever. weird. That's weird. Yeah, because I'm a I'm hockey and lacrosse left. He was good. Baseball too. right. Gotta go up with that left hand. Well, you know, Jim yeah. Abbott, 
famous pitcher, one hand. One hand. He didn't have a choice. He just had to use the one he had. Angels, California Angels at the time, I believe. Doing no hitter. Maybe it's maybe it a perfect game. What was it? Was it a no no? He has a no no under his belt. I had really? his. Uh, I had one of his rookie cards. No glove, just arm. He switched. So he, he held. He held the glove. Where he had like a little. I don't know if it's insensitive to say no, but he had like okay. a little yeah, nub yeah. that he held his glove with, and then he threw the pitch, and he would quickly go like that and put it on his hand. You got to yeah. think he never won a gold glove, right? Dan, come on, dude. I guess it's just really hard to feel I mean, your I position I feel like in it's that. probably yeah. right. What Dan's saying is factual. I don't know if it needed to be said, but I think Dan's sure. right. I think everybody was thinking it. People were at, people were like, I wonder if. Now, that would be a story. If he, he took one home? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. threw a no-hitter in 1993. Wow. No shit. Jeez. Good for Jim Abbott. Very cool. Very, very cool. Got any other fun baseball notes? I picked up food the other night uh, when it was raining, and I sat at the bar because it wasn't ready. I talked Rangers, old school Rangers, with this dude for like 30 minutes. Yeah, I guess Bryce Harper's mashing it right now. Is he mashing? I think he is. We got to get all the sports in because Dan can't do too much dip today. (laughs) (laughs) Brett, can we talk about something near and dear to your heart? Sure can, My heart, too. Our friends at Keeps. Yes, sir. How's so, it keeps? Your hair looks great. Thank you. Voluminous today. Yeah, like seriously, so voluminous, like the top of your head did not get scorched by the sun. No, like not the rest at all. Of your body, not at all. It's looking good. Did you know that two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're thirty-five, Dan? I did not. Did no. you? Dave, I'm thinning sh- out, dog. Like uh, I'm not gonna say anything, man. I don't. I don't. I don't do that to people. Yeah. More than fifty million men, Dylan, in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. That's a lot. That's of, so that's, many men. It's a lot of lads. Many men. Many lads. men. Many, 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 many men. He's doing. Uh, Wish baldness upon me. <laughs> <laughs> Good, man. Look, Keeps is the, is fantastic. They offer a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. Convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home. No more embarrassing, you know, trips to the dermatologist or whatever. Like. You got to go in there, like, and you get, everybody in there is kind of looking at you like, oh, I know why you're here. You're like, yeah, okay, I get it. It's like the sneaky best part of this, man. You don't have to like leave your living room. Do it all from right there. They deliver it to you. It's fantastic. The treatment started just $10 per month, too. And Keeps offers generic versions. How about that? Yep. Dude. Keep the price down. Why wouldn't you do this? Discreet packaging so you're not going to get embarrassed when you walk down to the mailbox and you come back. It's not going to say, yeah. hey, this, this fucker's balding. It's not going to say that. It's discreet. Imagine the label that says that. That would be an, a weird strategy. Uh, yeah. Although, never mind. <laughs> Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. When did you see results? Dave, that, that is they, – they, it's a part of the copy here. That is the biggest point of this whole thing. You need to, get, you need to play the prevent defense before it's too late. A preemptive Can't strike win. on your hairline. Exactly, exactly. I started when I, – I noticed some thinning at like 21, Dave. I got on the train right then and there, and here we are. Almost 27 this month. Yeah. Now he's the floppy haired fuck Brett. That's yeah, look at him. Right, yeah. He's the Thanks poster child. Sorry. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash steam to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash steam to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash steam. This What's next up? segment's called Chinese Rocket. What's up with this Chinese Rocket? What well, happened? Dylan, the Chinese launched a 21 ton. Rocket the other day. Let's go. All su- great, successful, <laughs> successful launch. Here's the thing. They Wait, why is Dan so excited about this rocket? <laughs> Love China. Like, to space? To space, yeah. Th- they're building their own uh, international space station. I feel like that was a key component here that we need to include. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, into space. A space launch. Not, not it wasn't like a menacing rocket. Right. It I wasn't, see, a, it uh, wasn't a, no. a North Korea rocket because that would be a different situation. A different country. Yeah, no, they're going. No, I understand that. Yeah. But, yeah, but they, they fly rockets worldly. for different reasons is what I'm saying. It wasn't a, an Andy Dalton, like, red rocket. Bears have a quarterback now. How about that? Anyway. There's a sports tie-in. No, QB1. He's is, got red hair. QB1 is clearly Andy Dalton. Though. AD. Uh, so they launched a rocket. They're building a, 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 a space station, the Chinese are. With Russia, right? Uh, a little, little collab? A little hard to say. That was a moon-based eh? thing. That yeah, was yeah. A moon, yeah, we'll, well, we can talk about that later. They've landed on the moon a few times, mm-hmm. actually. Circling conspiracy. Yeah. Shouts to him. Anyway, they launched a rocket. It all went well. Successfully launched the module into space. Now, here's the problem, Dylan. The, uh, the rocket that got it there, they didn't... They didn't plan for after it, it got it up there, so it's just falling to Earth. They they didn't really think that one. You figure no. that that'd be like day one, like how to get this thing back to Earth. I think the uh, idea is that it's going to burn up in the atmosphere. A little too big for that. Oh yeah. So uh, the twenty-one ton rocket is likely to crash uncontrolled back to Earth in the coming days. 
It's traveling at about seven kilometers per second. How big is this bad boy? Uh, it's 30 meters long. 30 meters long, okay. Look, if this thing takes me out, so be it. <laughs> but we're More power to you. If Let's say it enters the Earth's atmosphere. Right. And it's still intact, not burned up enough. We're going to have time to... They're gonna figure out where it's falling, right? We're gonna be like, "Oh, it's gonna fall in like Ohio. Let's get, let's yeah, get out of here." It's like, it's always why Ohio. are you always putting it on Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna fall outside of Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna fall outside of Cleveland. It rocks. Look, everybody, uh, put your put your arms away. We're but good. It's... Question is, like, like, hey, everyone in Cleveland, like, okay. you, you know, heads up. I don't know how much time they'll have, Dylan. Doesn't like. It's not, not going to be a lot. Long. Do we have no. parameters where it's going to land? No, they don't. They don't. The once the, it once it enters, do a little calculation. Space news of where Dave and I get our, our news from, reported the re-entry of the rocket uh, was impossible to predict due to the vagaries of orbital decay. Yeah, I've often said that. Vagaries it's very hard to predict. Sounds orbital like a puddle of mud decay. out. Decay. Current measurements indicate the rocket could re-enter the atmosphere anywhere from New York in the Northern Hemisphere to Wellington, New Zealand in the Southern Hemisphere. That is entirely... That's a big area. Too much of a range at this point. So everyone in that, if you live in that region, <laughs> just heads up. Keep your head on a swivel, dude. So the, how's the Bam Vancouver region looking? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, it, it's literally too hard <laughs> dude, to that's say. Dude, that's in the strike zone, dude. You got to think so. The strike zone is the entire planet. Yeah. <laughs> so they really more. didn't think this through? I, I think. They, I mean, some, something surely they went did. wrong. I mean, it's this, not like they just like, oh, yeah, shit, we forgot to yeah. like, about getting this thing back to Earth. It's right. not like like we built a rocket and launched it. We're like, oh, fuck. Now what? We forgot about that part, the, the re-entry. This this happened last year too with another Chinese rocket. You see these SpaceX rockets, uh, SpaceX, SpaceX X. rockets. Yeah, Elon yeah. loves to blow rockets up. Do you see him coming back to Earth though? The boosters. <sighs> yeah, it's insane. He's pushing it to the limits. It, they they land like gingerly. It's per, it's incredible on the on a boat. No, this I saw a land a land uh, one. They 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 do the boat thing too. Dude, these, they two, they come down real fast and then they just they hit the the burners and then it slows down and they just sit down. It's incredible. I know. How I do they do this you. shit? I agree. The Chinese Damn, they're they're they don't subscribe to that technique. Thermodynamics. These people are, are smarter than I am, I think. Physicists. I think. Probably a Blockchain lot of time too. spent in the science factory. Okay. Planning this shit out. Testing rocket fuel. It's pretty wild. Uh, Everyone's trying to go to space right well, now. Well, Dave, man. that's what Everybody. big science wants you to think. Right? Anyway. Yeah, he's reading from spacenews.com. Right. That, is that real? The trusted source on all things space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Space, space news. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, so we know, we don't know until the thing's it's in it's like currently in orbit. Let's the, go. The orbit is just decaying. So until it starts slowing down to the point where we know, you keep saying that. I don't know what that means. When it slows down to the point where it can't sustain the orbit, just falling around the Earth. Did you hear? Did you know that the coastlines are like you can't even measure them. The coastline paradox. Did you, did you know about that? Have I you did. told Dan about the coastline paradox? Tell Dan. You know the coastline paradox is Dan. Dan's a is that, with guy. The, is that with the uh, the coral reefs? Nope. It's uh, <laughs> it's a good guess. <laughs> <laughs> you can never accurately measure a coastline of any of any coastal area because you can always have a smaller unit of measurements, like a fractal thing. Is your brain in a million pieces right now? Well, California's going to break off no matter what. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. I don't, yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, the, the, big, the big quake is fall. coming. The big, the big boy coming. quake. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Keep an eye out. And it can't come rocket. soon enough. Am when, I right, guys? When are we expecting this thing to enter? It, it, literally, Dylan, <laughs> impossible to predict. Literally, literally impossible. So it might never. According to Space News, it might it might change course and just go go out into space. But like, yo, I'm out of here. Peace. No, it's definitely falling. It probably doesn't Earth. talk. It's falling. It's not accelerating. It so it's, you don't think it talks? It's no, he's fall. remember he's explained the orbital decay. They didn't put a, like a parachute on it. Wasn't no, that a Pixar no. movie though? The talking rocket. Was that something else? You got to strap. That a sounds like a Pixar that bad boy. Well, I think they, they banked on it burning up in the atmosphere, and it's not going to. It's going to partially burn up, and they said still uh, potentially uh, massive motors and engines are still uh, going to fall. Someone's getting fined for this, huh. right? Well, it's made in China, you know. What, what's the, oh. what's the, what are the repercussions for this? Economics. Uh, is somebody, uh, if it lands on your house, you're probably getting a good sum of, of oh, you, you best from the believe, Chinese government. You like, best believe they're bright to hey, check man. your boy. Yeah. Partial burn, also what like, Dylan's hey, known for. Like, hey, your rocket landed on my house. Like, compensate me, right? T took out my bird feeders. Like, yeah. Right. Ooh, speaking of bird feeders, I want to put an owl box in. And, oh, I thought you guys had another ad read there with bird feeders. Owl boxes <laughs> are so hot Do we need it? Right why now? do we not have a bird feeder sponsor? Owl That's boxes on me. are hot. Hand up. That's on me. 
I guess is he getting off easy without? I don't know. There's dude. a lot of sponsors we could have that we don't, and the bird feeders is at the top of the list. Yeah, it seems like it didn't even cross his mind. What no, it idiot. didn't. It's pretty sad that we had to have Dan on to, to trigger <laughs> that. <laughs> it's okay. I'll take my ten percent. No, I do want an owl box. An owl, an owl box. People put them in their tree. You build Ooh, a hut right by now. them if you're if you're not inclined. Ooh. Exactly. And Ooh. like they just go like owls just Ooh. like see it and they're like, oh, I would fuck with that. And they just move in there. Mm-hmm. Aren't, uh, aren't barn owls like aren't what don't they make that? like a we got a big package, big boy package. Like is that desk. Randy's desk? Oh, it is. Right. You got another desk. It was 70 bucks. I told him he could get it, it was on sale. It's for the intern. Oh, can we make the intern assemble it? <laughs> oh, I'm not fucking with that. Anyway, owl boxes. I probably will never fuck with that either, but I just think they're tight. Because, <laughs> like, the owls, like, they just know to go live there. Mm-hmm. Really? It's pretty – yeah, dude, it, it is – if you have the Next Door app, which I highly recommend, even though 99% of it's just trash, uh, you get some dope stuff. You get some snakes. You'll also get people being like, hey, I just put this owl box in, check it out, and it's a photo of, like, an owl just hanging out up there. Will you live, live stream your owl box? I said live stream. Um – I'm trying to think of like a of a, a content strategy where you just you just go live and you just put your phone up there, right? And it's just, people can just check in on the feed. Isn't it, that like th- that makes the rounds on Twitter, right? Like an eagle is landing. An eagle one, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, there was one in Lano recently, not recently, maybe like a decade ago. Do you remember the eagles in Lano? Don't you get a place out there? There was a there was an eagle nest out there. Really? Yeah, and got, people were like pulled over on the side of the ranch road looking oh, at. We get a bunch of red hawks out there, but. Don't know much about the Eagle situation. Okay. Anyway, what did you think of their draft? Would did you want to grade it for us while you're here? That's a great transition. Um, it's whatever. All I right. like Devonta Smith. I think Devonta Smith's a Hall of Fame receiver. So uh, yeah, I'm not really looking forward to the Eagles. I think they're a six and ten team max probably. Okay. Hey, in your pumped new... for UCF getting five guys drafted though. There you go. And, and national uh, champions. National champs, and that just proves that Josh Heupel is an awful coach, and Tennessee is going to burn to the fucking ground. Wow! You, <laughs> you win six games with five like draft picks, or you have just as many draft picks as Clemson or Oklahoma. Like you, Josh Heupel can't win with that are, team. Are you saying that the Rockets going to land on Tennessee? Yeah, I, the, the Heupel's going to get got by the Chinese Rocket. Wow! If that really does happen, that's You heard it here first. I hope it doesn't. Yeah. I hope it falls and no one's hurt, but it's, if it you does, know, it's going to fall on like a Pizza Hut or something and it's going to like brand Twitter is going to go nuts. I bet it falls in the ocean, but if it falls on Pizza Hut, then everyone's going to post the Papa John's Day of Reckoning meme. Oh. Maybe Maybe that's what he was referring to. He was at the Kentucky Derby this weekend. Was he? Yeah. Fantastic characters at that place. He's a Louisville guy. Yep. Uh, can we do a follow up? This is from Bloomberg Business Week. We talked a little bit last week about the uh, CEO who got canned for the uh, his microdosing of LSD, which it's a Silicon Valley thing. Dan, you're a big LSD guy. Mm-hmm. I uh, microdose time to time. You, know? you microdose uh, co- caffeine, Dan. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's on on. We right. balance it out though. You I've been microdosing grand. CBD lately. Sure, it kind of gets me on point at night. Yeah, Justin Zhu is his name. And uh, there's a follow-up piece uh, in Bloomberg Business Week, and there's a little bit more insight on his um, LSD. I guess you can call it a trip. I don't know. But to, to be clear, he did – this is the first time he did LSD. He microdosed LSD before presenting a meeting, like doing a meeting before potential investors, and uh, did not go as expected. Says here, when he tried to walk the potential investors through a series of financial projections, Zhu looked at the screen and saw numbers and images swelling and shrinking, making them impossible to discern. His body felt as if it were melting. After an awkward pause, a colleague stepped in. Zhu took a swig of his tea, decided to speak from memory, and pressed ahead. The pitch did not lead to an investment. Uh, Dave, are you saying he uh, ends up turning himself into a glass of orange juice, and then when he spills over, he dies? Uh, that seems like is a that reference a, is that a Disney movie? to a thing that I am not familiar with. No, no, that's just every like urban legend about a guy that does LSD. Why would you ever do LSD before like hitting up like a meeting be- with investors, potential for the, investors? Wait, for he, the first time? Did he take yes. too much? That, that's, Was he trying to microdose? He microdosed. He didn't know, dude. Like he didn't even do a trial run. He just microdosed, and the worst thing that can happen to you during a presentation, one of the worst things. First, obviously crapping your pants. Yep. Second, feeling like you're melting. Yeah. 
You don't want to feel like you're no. melting. <laughs> With the numbers melting. Like, I feel like I'm melting right now, mainly because it's a little hot in here. Randy, can you give us one degree down? <laughs> exactly one degree. <laughs> that's felt like more degrees, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, I, I can't believe this. And also, like, this, the title of this uh, kind of does him wrong. LSD cargo shorts in the fall of a high-flying tech CEO. Uh, there's also, like, an unnecessary shot that he was um, – Rocking cargos in front of uh, some VC guys, and uh, that fell through. Wait, so he, he microdosed LSD and threw on his cargo shorts and presented. I don't know if he had cargo shots, dur- cargo shorts during the that meeting, but he had them on, paired with a T-shirt that I assume was not a cuts T-shirt, um, at a different meeting with some VC guys, and that did not go well. You can't, you can't do that. Seems like he probably just should have took the whole group down to Peru and done ayahuasca, right? Yeah. You got to get them on your level. You get them on yeah. your level, and then you sell the company years later for millions of dollars to Unilever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. After you make, I mean, you, you get, you know, starting money from a, uh, a sex toy. Yes. Yes. Mm. Flashlight. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We've gone off the rails. The American dream. It is the American dream. The flashlight. Capitalism. Why do we have a flashlight sponsor? I, I don't know. Mostly, you don't want to go. Like they, they don't need us. I don't think. Normalized male masturbation. They're in Austin, aren't they? They were. Yeah. <laughs> As was. Do you know Austin. who started Flashlight? Or not? No. Okay. Yeah, it was, it's Aubrey Marcus. His oh da- really? His dad. Yeah, yeah, his dad. His oh, his dad. dad that's yeah, right. that's what we're referring to. On it just sold our good friends at On it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. We don't know. The deets. I'm still waiting for somebody I follow on Instagram to just post like a obnoxious story about it, but. No one has yet. I want to know who got the bag and who didn't. Everyone in that meeting was microdosing LSD. You know? Probably, yeah, absolutely, and yeah. I guarantee it wasn't their first time, and they did not feel like they were melting. I only see ads for their movement, their shoulder move, movement videos, and the On It Six program. Yeah, maybe yeah. I move to that. Maybe like you might need to be a mace guy. At, at age thirty, I just get yeah, steel mace, a kettlebell, and I just kind of only eat meat. I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. Carnivore diet. Yeah. So at the end of the day, don't. Um, don't microdose before a meeting. Yeah, I won't do that. I promise. I feel like it would be fine you. here. No, what's the worst that happens here? Uh, the worst people are like, "Why didn't you share?" Have you guys done like a podcast people people on be like, drugs? Were they microdosing during that, during that episode because it wasn't good? Have you done a podcast on drugs? No. Are you, uh, you CBD? You f- I've CBD okay. d- well, during a couple of them. Do yeah. you fear it would turn into a Joe Rogan Post Malone podcast? That's one of the worst po- podcasts of all time. Like pause, it, it, you can listen to about twenty five minutes of it, and then you're just this is indecipherable, mm-hmm. unlistenable, just bad. The one with Elon was really bad. The people who get torqued for Elon to go on Rogan are like, you're not really torqued. You're just saying that so people think that you're like uh, up and up on like finance. You said for SNL? No, <laughs> no, it's gonna no. I'm gonna watch it, but it's just gonna be all secondhand embarrassment. You see, he's tweeting out soliciting uh, skit ideas as mm-hmm. if they don't have a, a room full of writers. Oh, well, the yes. writers might not. Yes. They so might try to the, sabotage it. They're going to a guest host write skits. Is that a thing? No, I don't think so. Especially uh, guest hosts who are Elon Musk. I don't right. Know. What's What's the problem with Elon now? I don't know. Why do they have a problem with him? Uh, he had some bad. I, he had. I don't know. His COVID takes were apparently bad. I don't remember. I don't know. It's hard to. I don't follow that much of him. I only follow what he's doing with Bitcoin because it affects the uh, the very very tiny the market, amount of yeah. Bitcoin. That he's I have. high on Doge. He's high on Doge. Big Doge guy. What's Doge doing today? It's up. Good. How many NFTs are you guys selling? We're trying to make them. What's our first NFT? Got to be Dylan Dunking, right? <sighs> Do we own that property? Mm, yeah. Mike recorded on his cell phone, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike owns the property. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. From what I learned, my creative property under that company is theirs. So, Okay, well, give us a, what's Danny's first NFT? Trying to think some some circling back moments. Sup's dog, where you just said sup's dog. Again, we don't own that property. Fuck. Yeah. You're right. Were you in the beer Olympics? No, I actually had the foresight to avoid that video. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good for yeah. you. And we, good if for you me. you want to just turn this last part of the podcast into the Grand X. Let's talk about the beer Olympics. Yeah. It's like one of my favorite conversations. Me and Jared weren't in it. I don't think Ross was in it. How is Jared not in? My it? name is John Duda, and I like cigarettes. I like cigarettes. He said. I actually like that video. What? Hot take. Wow. Dan, that it is just the went worst on, video. It went on a little too went long. Went on a little too long. That was yeah. the worst video I've ever seen in my entire life across any platform, any 
any genre. There's been anything. worse. No. Yeah. There's been some worse videos. Dude, Clint came into Clint called an emergency meeting about how bad the video was, and he's not even a content guy. He's the five tool guy. Right? Yeah, he's the five tool guy. He was like, "What? What the hell happened here?" I'm gonna. I need to text him and tell him that I have acquired a sixth tool. He would be very, very happy to hear that. Do we say what is? What is? I, I can't discuss. He would also right. like to know what that tool is, so he can then acquire it himself. You're a tool. Oh really? You're not a tool. What are your greatest Grand X video moments, dude? I, I actually popped onto a couple of, uh, early TFM, not early TFM videos, but there's a TFM video where I make like a a, a quick in and out tactical um, as like an alumni or something. I think you filmed it. Um, but I, and it was fine. That probably wasn't my highlight. The vortex video was, was good because I, I fully expected to be like, to have like the least, um, capable throwing technique of a vortex and, um, no offense to Will, but Will was the star of the vortex video. Oh no. Oh no. That's the video where Micah threw it. And then didn't he? Yes. He pulled out, he he pulled out his fake. I don't know. I think your 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 probably achieving moment at Grand X on video is your voice in the intro of the surf video. We just do a little narration. I forgot we did a surf video. With, yeah. Who were the two of the guys on the surf trip? Hector was one. I don't remember the other guys. And the name. other guy looked like uh, yeah, the hot dude. He looked like Bodie from. Uh, I was going to say Hector, Hector wasn't not hot. No, Hector was hot as well, but um, kind of looked like Chad goes deep or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. A, he was a short king, but he was also absolutely stacked. He was like, dude. With, dude does not drink. Dude just eats like chicken breast and rice and broccoli and surfs and surfs. So bad for Will in that photo. Yeah, because you and Dylan are like both like Dan. Tra- Dan's going tra- tra- crazy with here. the traps. We got the surf. Like, so That's when I was on pro hormones though for uh, Substock. Mm. So was I was it really just, for Substock? Pro- I feel like you were just doing uh, pro. You were doing no, no, no. We had we had the Wolf of supplements. Uh, he says Wolf. Have too. you talked to the Wolf, wolf. of supplements lately? <laughs> the Wolf. Uh, not really, no. Uh, but he would come His on every now and then. The Wolf of Supplements? Yes. Yeah, as a nickname. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a self-given nickname. And uh, he would just give us free shit all the time and to just kind of try on the podcast. None so. of it was FDA approved, right? No, no. no. Uh, and this was after I already did. I did SARMs before. That's what, how I that lost. That sounds all. like a deadly run. I got up to 230 virus. pounds, and then I, I went on SARMs and got down to, like, 205. But I was, like, good 205, but it just, like, melted half my face. He melted. Like ACDC. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. SARMs are terrible for you. Don't take SARMs. Um, don't take pro hormones. Don't take anything, really. I will, I'm, since I'm turning 30, I want to go to the doctor and try to get on the uh, TRT. <laughs> Dan, you're only 30, dude. So? You don't need to do that. Testosterone, Testosterone replacement. replacement therapy. Dan, you don't oh, need that, Oh, that's a real dude. thing. That's real. <sighs> oh, yeah, yeah. Dan, Talk you don't need that. Yeah, but. And your doctor so will tell the, you, no. One of the co-hosts of Drinking Bros, uh, Dan Holloway, he hasn't worked out in five years or something, and he's on TRT drinks and does drugs every day still cut because of the trt no shit yeah yep. do we need to edit out that you just said he drinks and does drugs every day no he's okay. very like he's trying to write a book called like uh do I drugs like an adult <laughs> i do drink and do drugs every day <laughs> he's a functioning <laughs> i don't work addict. out <laughs> yeah yeah he's a functioning drug addict right. uh former military guy fuck yeah uh, yeah we should Thank have him for on. his service loves to talk yeah you should he loves to talk about it, drug use and his time over overseas Man. Do these guys bust your balls? It's it's weird that like I am kind of like the biggest beta at the company. I mean, other than Rob, but <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Rob's working there. I, I guess him. Jake doesn't technically work there. No, no, I hired Rob. Jake is you just Rob's on boss. Not oh. technically. Oh. No, I can tell him what to do though. Yeah. Oh, what's so that? Is he doing that full time? Yeah. It's, oh. Yeah, yeah. Do y'all do editorial? Uh, no, we don't write anymore. So. We just produced the podcast. That hurts, that hurts Brett. Brett loves editorial. He's so horny for I'm, it. I'm horny Listen, man. for editorial, man. It's, uh, it's, it's not out there anymore. Like, there's not a whole lot of, I mean, even Barstool, I think, has kind of moved away from it. Oh, it's tough to monetize. It's more about the audience engagement, the audience development. I'll, yeah. I'll Plus, you want, up you want lo- if you're going to do editorial, you got to be long form. you got to be, like, I want original, it. and you can't write. Just, never mind. Every time we do a survey, people want more editorial. Like, our diehards love the editorial. People who really, really like us. There's like a hundred of them. They really want to see us write some shit. People say that, but then they'll kind of like scroll through it, read eh, the first paragraph, and be like, that oh, good. I'm out. I'm not good. that good. <laughs> Dave's lost it. And they're right. Yeah, I we haven't written in years. No. It I, doesn't, do, I do what's for dinner. Yeah. That's my, that's my, uh, my writing book. chops these days. 
Uh, before we get into Brett's breaking news, which, oh my God, I'm looking at this. What a lineup we've got. I want to mm. talk about Ballsy real quick. Dan, how your balls doing? <laughs> uh, well, Do not, a ball check on Dan. Not super great if I want to get on the TRT, but. Okay. Yeah. Like how they smell them, though. Oh, they smell good. Okay, yeah. Fantastic. This in the direction. Yeah. Our friends at Ballsy, they've developed the uh, most useful product, the Ball Guard Ball Deodorant. How about big that? summer coming up. Apparently. Big, big sweaty summer. It's a revolution in testicle deodorant technology. Say that five times fast. Well, I won't say that five times fast, but I will say that Randy let us know that he is currently ballsied up right now as we speak. So good for Randy. Ball smelling tight. Good to know. Good to know that there's a good, good set of you know well smelling balls next to that dump truck ass of his. <laughs> exactly. Ball guard is a ball deodorant that goes on as a soothing lotion and quickly dries as a soft. Silky powder to eliminate sweat, itch, and odor. You don't want any of those things. Sweat's going to happen, but if you can minimize that, especially when you're trying to play golf with the boys, swamp ass is embarrassing. It's sweaty ball season. It's, it's, it's uh, swamp ass season. It's very muggy today outside. Personal anecdote. Here we go. After a round of 18, mm-hmm. you don't have time to go home and change, but we're going to Woodrow's with Dylan and his new friends if we're invited. Yeah, you guys are not welcome to hang out with my new friends. I'm uh, sorry. Throw some of this on. And you're going to feel like a million bucks. It's like taking a shower for your balls. Yeah. Without having to. No bullshit ingredients. They've got unique formulations. It's bold. It's never boring, Dylan. Keep your balls tight, Dave. Yeah. I've dude, always if, said that. Yeah, you can't step out into public knowing that you might have smelly balls. Okay? Check out BallsyBrand.com. Use promo code WASH for 20% off your entire Wash order. 20. Wash, Wash 20. Wash 20. Yeah. Washed 20 at BallsyBrand.com. I highly recommend the nut rub as well, but the ball guard, it's it's revolutionary. Highly recommend it. If you're a guy who's used the powder stuff in the past, other stuff, this this stuff blows it out of the water. It's way easier to use and way cleaner. If you're a chafe boy, this is an answer for you. All right, chafe boy, what's your breaking news? Oh, I actually have some breaking news. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Just, okay. He's going to hijack cut, 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 yeah, like Dan. Sure, Dan, go ahead. So this is a tweet, and then I'll tell you who it's from after. Uh, it's a photo of Sam Burns that says, A dream come true. Thank you to my incredible support system for helping me get to this point. Look forward to what's to come at Callaway Golf, at Adidas Golf, at MasterCard, at Origin Bank. Okay. But it's not sent from Sam Burns' Twitter account. It's from uh, Bryson DeChambeau's Twitter account. Oh, no. He's stealing Sam wow. Burns' clout. <laughs> so they have the same team? The same. Got to be the same out. social media guy on wow. Hoot, like Hootsuite or whatever. Just so he, wrong so account. Saying, oh, my God. Oh, dude, the Clout God. Wars, are just, there's going to be so many casualties. Is it, still, is it still up or has it been deleted yet? I think it's deleted, but, yeah, it was uh, somebody screenshot it. Oh, oh so it was a mistake. It was a mistake, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So whoever runs oh, both their social they have, yeah, accounts. They have the same social team, apparently. Love that. Brett, that's a tough act to follow. That was, that was live, in-game, breaking news. Right. I'm going to try to do my best here, Dip. Uh, you familiar with Brett's breaking news, Dan? He breaks news. <sighs> Usually stuff that happens mid-pod. But anyway, since you're the guest, I will leave this up to you. A little choose-your-adventure here, okay. man. Would you like to go chicken tenders? Don't you cover all of them anyway? Dad bods yeah. or invasive Florida species? I want to eliminate dad bods, so get rid of that topic. Okay. Yeah. Invasive species. Oh, Those... yeah, he's a Florida guy. Did you know, Dan, you ever heard of the uh, iguanas in Florida? Mm-hmm. That they, when they get cold, they just They just fall, fall off the trees. Dylan thinks it's pretty funny, actually. It's they come hilarious. back to life. Kind of, kind of tragic, really. They, they live, right? It's super funny. Um, I mean, they're falling pretty high. Oh, fuck. Yeah, they're fine. Depends. It probably depends on what, what they yeah. land on. Anyway, they're not allowed anymore. Iguanas are an invasive species in Florida, as are pythons mm-hmm. and wild pigs. As of today, they are all illegal to own. Giant lizards, wild boars, coyotes, and pythons. Get out of here. Who's owning a coyote? Yeah, why would you own a coyote? I don't know. Just get a, a golden know. retriever. Or a husky. Uh, a number of dogs that would be better the options than the coyote. Yeah, it's more like a wolf. So wait, are they going to start eradicating the iguana? That would be weird. Hunting iguana would be sad. Yeah, but then I you th- let them out into the wild. They repopulate kind of like the uh, the pythons. That's how the python problem became a thing in Florida. It's true. Man. I'm not I mean, it's not quite things. on the same level as uh, Pablo Escobar's hippos in Colombia. Mm-hmm. Big but facts. It's, it's, that, it's almost there. Unclear about eradication, but it is now illegal to own them as pets. Well, that's you know, a invasive species cause $1.4 trillion in damage worldwide every year. we got to thin out sense. their numbers, you know? Got to thin out the numbers. It's too bad, man. You tell, can hear that. Tell us about chicken tenders. Well, David, there's a uh, chicken tender shortage, and more, mostly just a chicken shortage in this country and around the world. Well, there's a wi- yeah, wing shortage. It's been happening for about a decade now. 
it's like the uh, the male version of uh, yeah. wine's healthy for you. Right, yeah. right, right. So, the, the, but people are saying this is pandemic related. Is this gotta, like the lumber thing? You got to check chain? the choke points. What, hap- what happened? What happened? The, the pandemic. Can you got to check the choke points. That's true. Here's a tongue twister for you. The pandemic prompted poultry plants to reduce staff, and in turn, the need for comfort food when Americans stayed home has increased demand. Ooh, conspiracy, Dan. This is thrown from, on his tinfoil hat. Uh, well, with the Biden stuff or the alleged right wing uh, t- saying that Biden wants to eliminate red meat. Mm-hmm. Now we're eliminating chicken. There's 30 million acres in this country ran by Chinese farmers. So makes you think that are all pork farms. Is that verifiable? Mm-hmm. Is mm-hmm. that big facts? Or? I had some really dope do- pork dumplings, by the way, on Saturday night. Yeah, we're trying anyway. to transition into a pork company or a country. We have a huge pig problem, so that makes sense. Hat off. Ben Kaplan, the CEO of Top Agency, said we didn't have optimal chicken distribution. Some chicken in some parts of the world that needed to be in other parts of the world, we couldn't move it around. There's hmm. a supply chain issue, Dave. Also said uh, bad weather and power outages in Texas and Arkansas has worsened the problem. And the Thank- grid's going to go down. Thanks a lot, uh, windmills in West Texas. It's all your fault. Well, they're, they're cancerous, Dave. It's true, and they kill birds. They do kill birds. Anyway, uh, 203 million Popeye's chicken sandwiches were sold last year. With one That's why they pivoted to the flounder sandwich. Selling 3,582 sandwiches in one day. Have you ever seen a flounder? Like, actually alive? They yes. Have the, have the eyes on the head. It's not great. On the, on the, uh, no, you don't want to see the flounder. No. Weird looking, man. Sure don't. No. What, your friend flounder? No, we, no, different. We're talking about the actual sea creature. Oh, okay. So be prepared for chicken to skyrocket in price. What's up with dad bods, dude? Will Smith, Dylan. <laughs> I saw the pick, man. That was a dad bod. Randy, could you eat? Yeah. That's bad. There he is. Poor guy. You know, Smith, not that bad, though, for a dad. He's letting him hang out, though. He's 52, and he yeah. said, I think, he said, uh, I think he's, got a ro- he's got a role coming up. Doesn't have to cuss in his raps to sell records. Said he's in the worst shape of his life was the caption of this very pick. I believe it. He's normally, a, yeah, dude, dude, remember Ali? He was fucking jacked. Man. Okay. I think he still looks great. I am legend. He's pretty yoked. Pretty yoked. Just welcome to the club. Dad bod club. It's not terrible. I mean, can we just I, kill that phrase? Dad bod? Yeah. Can you write Dude, you I want to put it Five reasons uh, why the dad bod is coming back. Uh, Written by Dan Regester. Can we kill it? Oh, you have to write a column. Dan, you kill killed it. it today. Thank you for being on. <sighs> Thanks, Dan. This is my pivot out of the pod. Okay. Okay. Plug yourself. I got a tanky, man. Go Big ahead. Time. I'll let you go. No, go ahead, Dan. No, no. Plug yourself, no, dude. Go, go ahead. No, you can plug. Where All can right. we find you? Uh, so just check out my history podcast at Softcore History on Instagram. Obviously, it's available wherever you find podcasts. And uh, yeah, leave a five star review if you can. Leave a five star review for Softcore History because that's how you manipulate the charts. Let's manipulate some charts. We'll see you guys Wednesday. Tomorrow also for Worst of Will's Back Wednesday. We'll have a good time. Bye. Bye.